welcome to the using Zotero tutorial video. So starting out, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open your Zotero. So you should already have it downloaded and installed on your computer. So whether that's a laptop or you're using a desktop, you will want to make sure that you have that um, done. And you will also want to make sure that you have already downloaded the Zotero connector extension. This is definitely going to make it a lot easier when you're wanting to add things to your like Zotero library. Going from our Zotero, so right when you get it booted up, you're going to see this screen, so it's going to tell you, welcome to Zotero. Um, it's going to mention kind of those same things that I talked about. You can, if you want to, uh, look at their quick start guide. If you still need to install that Zotero connector, you can do that as well. And if you need to do, to set up your syncing, if you're using Zotero on a different computer, you can also do that as well. Um, we also have videos for that for any of those processes as well. So we have a syncing Zotero video and we also have a download and then downloading and installing Zotero that you might want to check out. There are kind of lots of different options of things on this tutorial that we're going to be talking about. So that first off, we're going to be talking a bit about some of the features that you have that might help you to organize stuff. So depending on how you like to organize your references or kind of the sources that you use when you might have a speech or a presentation or a paper, anything that you might be doing research for and need to find like valid information, you might want to keep it organized um, just so that you know where everything is. So one of the ways that you can do this inside of Zotero is creating folders. So if you don't organize it, it is just going to kind of like everything that you save to your Zotero is just going to kind of land here. Um, so here in the middle where it says like, welcome to Zotero, it's just going to like start adding things. So you would just have an entire list, which is fine. If that helps you to, you know, be organized, that's totally fine. But if you would like to utilize the folder option, highly recommend it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the left. It's going to be the little file folder that's got like a plus sign. It is directly underneath the option for for file, we're going to click on that. It is going to ask us to name um, our collection. So you can literally give this whatever name that is going to be helpful for you to stay organized. I highly recommend naming the collections after your classes. So depending on the classes that you're taking each semester, what you can do is you can name them after that. So let's say that we know that we have, you know, like an English class. I might just use the course number. Um, so I have an English class. Um, it is, you know, English 101. Um, and then I would say call it good. Maybe I also have of like a science class um, so maybe I say like science and it's like 202 and the nice thing is that all of your folders are now going to be over there on the left directly under where it says my library and you can kind of go back and forth between your different folders um, and add things to whichever one that you're using whatever kind of goes with the specific class. That way you don't have to worry about losing anything. So that's kind of how to get started with that. The other things that we're really going to be focusing on, how do I add which specific type? So I'm going to do an example of how do I add a book? I'm going to do an example of how do I add a journal article? And then I'm going to do an example of how do I add a video? Just so that way you kind of see the different types that you can use. And then it should make it a lot easier when you then go to add stuff yourself. So the main one, well, the Zotero connector is actually going to make this way easier because we're we essentially have like a shortcut by having um, this extension. But if you needed to add things manually, you can do that. So you would be using kind of in the middle towards the top the green circle that has the white plus sign in it. And when you hover over it, it's going to say new item. Anytime that you want to add stuff, you can add stuff this way. It's just going to be more manual kind of to add it. So you would click on new item, um, or you can even use the drop down next to it. So the drop down next to it is going to give you all the options. So if you need to add a book or you need to add like a book section, so like just a chapter, um, if you want to add like a newspaper article or a journal article, um, you can also 
uh, link to files or like store copies of files. So let's say you've got like PDF files of um, a journal article or something like that. You can put those in here. Um, you can also go all the way down to where it says more and it's going to give you the full list of other things you can add. So if you needed to add like artwork or if you want to put like an attachment, if you want to add in like emails or something, um, you can do that as well. Podcasts, presentations, um, video recordings, lots of things. And this is just going to help you to keep everything organized and to make it easier for when you then have to um, create a citation or if you need to do a bibliography, this will make this so much easier for you to kind of do that. So there's also options in here for if we look next to it. So there's an option for adding item by like identifier. Um, you may or may not use that one a whole lot. Um, depending on how you like to organize your stuff, you might use the note option. So the note option is the third one in. It looks like almost like a little like sticky note pad. Um, you might use this. Um, it's really just going to depend on how you like to organize your stuff. But yeah, you can put notes on um, the things that you're adding. So if there's anything that you want to help remind yourself, you can definitely do that. Um, next to that is adding attachments. So if you like want to do um, a link, so like a URL link, you could do that or adding like copies of things and that sort of stuff you can also do. And then there's also a an advanced search that um, you can use if you just have a lot of things and you need to be able to search through all your stuff. So to kind of get started on adding things, we are going to hop over to our web browser. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to get into library stuff. So you can either go to library.clark.edu or you can go in through your MyClark. So in your MyClark, you're going to be looking for the card that says Academic Resources. And then underneath that, you're going to click on Library. Library is going to take you to our main like library sites and uh, if in the case that we were looking for um, a book so we'll start there so we're looking for a book we're going to scroll down to where it says library catalog we have this search box here um, let's say that um, we are working on a project where we need to find um, a specific book um, we'll throw out the topic the topic of physical therapy so I will type in physical therapy into the search box. I'm going to let it do its search. We're looking at a ton of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter to just Clark University Library over here on the left so that I don't see all of the things that are at a bunch of libraries. That's not super helpful to what I'm doing. And I might even scroll down to where it says format. I'm going to scroll down to book and I'm going to click on print book because that's what I'm after. I want a physical book. Um, so let's say that I looked at this second book here, evidence-based physical therapy. Um, so I clicked on it. Um, I scrolled through and I looked at like the contents and it was like, oh, okay, um, some of that stuff maybe I think is going to be helpful to my research. So what I would then do if I wanted to kind of like add it, so I want to save this to keep track of, I am going to go up towards the top of the screen over on the right side um, because I have my Zotero connector already installed. So I'm going to click on the option for extensions. Um, this part may look different. It's going to just depend on the computer you're using. But if you have the option for extensions, you would need to click on that. Um, for some computers, it might kind of just already be there. So you might see something that says like Zotero or like Zotero connector. Um, so in my case, I'm clicking on this, and under Extensions, I see Zotero Connector. Um, and then I'm going to be clicking on where it says More Options, those little three little dots. And I'm going to say Save to Zotero, and it's going to give me a bunch of different options. And some of these options, I may not know exactly what I'm going to end up with, 
but um, I may end up trying a few different ones out just to see what kinds of things come up. Um, so I may just start with save to Zotero, like the web page with snapshot. Um, so the thing about that is that once you've clicked on an option of what to save, what you're going to see is a box that comes up that says saving, um, and it's going to ask you where do you want to save, um, where do you want to save it. So uh, it's going to ask you, do you want to just save it in your library? Do you want to just save it in one of your folders that you've created? And then what I can do is I can go back over to my Zotero, and in this case, it happened to, uh, because I didn't change it, it saved it in my Science 202 folder, but it is also always going to save it to your library in general. So everything that you save is going to save there first um, in your library, and then it will also copy itself into specific folders if you've told it to do that. So um, what I can do is I can highlight, I can highlight it and essentially get all of the details. So over there on the right side I can see all the things that come up under info and because I saved it as a web page I'm getting less information um, but I do get the URL, the URL which will be helpful to navigate back to it. So I would be curious if we go back here and we say we want to save it again. So extensions, Zotero connector, say I want to save it. Maybe we'll try embedded metadata. It's going to save it to the same place. And actually this is like the better option. So the embedded metadata in this case is giving me not only the item type that it is a book, but it's giving me the authors, it's giving me um, publisher information, all of that fun stuff, but it is also giving me a URL. So I can use that link to get back to it, um, which is really nice. So, so yeah, if in the case that you have the option to do like an embedded metadata, that's a really good option. Um, web page was not so much, but that's okay. Um, one of the nice things you can do is you can delete things. So I'm going to delete it because I found it to not be that helpful. So that is essentially how you're going to kind of add in books. So if I were to come back to the library um, page, let's say that now I want to add an article. So what I could do is I can scroll down um, to where it says find articles and I can search in ProQuest Central which is just one database. It is a pretty good sized database and I also can go to databases so this first um, button in the Explore Library Resources I can click on databases and I can go through and pick out specific databases as well. So what I might do is kind of go that route. So I'm going to click on databases and because I'm looking for kind of sciencey sorts of things, I'm going to use a database that is called Science Direct. So in this case I'm going to be going to S for science. It's the second one here in the list. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to type in physical therapy. Okay, so then from here um, let's say that as part of our research, um, I maybe need to talk about um, a specific kind of like physical therapy. So, um, you know, I've, I've looked through the articles and I found this one that talks about the effect of clay therapy. And I'm like, oh, that sounds super interesting. Um, so what I might then do, um, I want to save it, so I'm going to go up to the top again and I'm going to click on extensions. In my case, um, this may, as I mentioned, not be the same case for you. You will probably still be going up to the top to click on something, but it may not necessarily be extensions. It may say Zotero connector already. Um, just be on the lookout for it. Um, and if not, when you then go to your extensions. And in this one, um, I actually have the option of 
kind of even more different ones. So I have an embedded metadata. I have a specific kind of database one. I also have a DOI, and I have like the web page ones. So we'll check out the Science Direct specific one. And it looks like it added it to my science. Okay, yep. Yeah. And then when we um, take a look at our Zotero, we can see that it lists out all of that helpful information. We see it kind of covers through in the abstract a bunch of different pieces. And we also get that URL. And I'm going to test it. So if I click on that URL, I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to open a window. Once I've got that URL plugged in, you can see that it takes me directly back to um, the same place. So that would be super helpful. It looks like essentially the only thing that it didn't do is it is it didn't include like the PDF of the article, um, which is okay. You could just like navigate um, back and then we'd do a view PDF and go from that way. So you could do that. Um, the main thing is that it is going to get you back to what you're looking at. So I would be curious if we come back up here and we click on Zotero again and we maybe do the embedded if that did anything. Okay, maybe it didn't just because we've already added it or something. Nope, I didn't click well enough on it. Okay, cool. Okay, and it looks like those are mostly like the same. The URL is still there. It's a little bit smaller just of the information that's listed in it, but either or. Okay, so we are going to take a look at um, videos. So if in the case we were adding videos, so um, one of the things I might do is I might look at databases again, and I might look at the um, DocuSeq um, database. So this is a video, a streaming video database. I might take a look at things there. So I would click on that. I might come up to the search. So little um, search box up here when you click on the little magnifying glass. And I might type in physical therapy and see what kinds of things come up. Um, so um, automatically I'm seeing one um, that talks about like art. So I might click on that one. Um, and then what I would do is back up to the top where it says extensions, or if it happens to say in your case is a tarot or is a tarot connector, anything like that. And in this case, I only have the options for like a web page with, with snapshot or without snapshot, but that is totally fine. And then I come back here and I'm going to copy and paste this just because I'm curious if it's going to go cool. So yeah, also works. So yeah, you'll get a URL that you can use. Um, I say if in the case that you were to still like go to YouTube and type in your topic, let's say that I am looking at the um, video that is what is physical therapy. I yet again, I'm going to go up to the top extensions or the tarot connector or possible other options. And I um, have the option of doing either like saved as a tarot, specifically YouTube, or the embedded metadata. And it actually specifically looks like it said that an error occurred when it was trying to save, and so it now is trying to save instead just as like a web page. Um, so some of the options may work, some of them may not. It's going to maybe just kind of depend. Yet again, it is hanging out here. It looks like it's not really filling in kind of a lot of those blanks, but it is giving me a URL. We might actually come back and see if the embedded data is better. Okay, so actually the embedded data, while it filled in things like the title, or I guess the short title. Yeah, so it did a short title. It did a regular title. It only gave us the YouTube link to YouTube itself, which is not really that helpful versus the other. The other one when we said save um, to Zotero just as like YouTube, it did include the specific link. So you might have a little bit of trial and error 
um, going on to see what option is going to be the best when you're trying to save it and kind of go from there and see what works um, better and what works like worse. Um, but you will kind of have, you know, just like a nice way to kind of stay organized um, among all your stuff. And uh, one of the things that you also kind of have going on is over there on the right where it says info, you also have the option for notes. So let's say you wanted to add um, notes or anything, anything that you think you might want to need to also have in your Zotero um, to help you either stay organized or maybe it's things related to the specific assignment that you're going to be citing all these things for, you can utilize that. You can also, uh, this is one of the really fantastic things about Zotero. So once we've got all of our stuff, what we can do is we can, um, you know, create a timeline. Um, we can also, if we select, so we've got our stuff selected, we can either do like a right click um, and we can generate reports or we can create bibliographies. You can also, okay, so yeah, right click is definitely going to be the best option. So you're going to right click and you're going to say create bibliography from items. You then from here can pick out specifically what citation style that you need. So do you need MLA? Do you need um, Chicago? Do you need APA? And um, then what you can do is you can say uh, output mode. Um, I want a bibliography. Um, or I just want citations and then you can say okay it's gonna ask you to then like save it so um, I'm just gonna say bibliography and then um, so in my case it happened to save it to the desktop but you can essentially tell it to save it wherever you would like it to and I'm gonna open it and tell it to open in Word and here is your completed bibliography um, so, um, is super helpful, super helpful, keeps you organized and gives you a place to kind of add in all of your resources that you think you're going to be using, you end up using, uh, will help you create your bibliography, it's just an all around great tool. And if you have any questions as you are using it, you, all you need to do is just, um, reach out to the library and we can kind of help you get things figured out.